We got a lot to cover here, guys. So, bear with me. With the franchise's biggest Sonics, there's no doubt gonna be a lot of games. And therefore, a lot of final bosses to fight. Now, I've done a similar video like this to commemorate the release of Sonic Superstars, but I'm gonna do a video, this specific version of the video will be to commemorate the release of Sonic X Shadow Generations. Now, this series has its fair share of types of boss fights you gotta fight, like side-scrollings, going to space, fighting literal gods and demons, Eggman. It, the list can be anything. Then that's what I like about it. And we're going to do something that I should have done on the previous list. The previous list had 19 bosses. Whether or not that was good is up to the public to see. But this time, we're tripling it. Because now, we're doing 60 bosses. I know, that seems like a lot. But I just wanted to do that because I wanted to go more in depth. And now with that out of the way, let's get into some of the conditions of this list. For number one, I dug deep for this one. <laughs> expect to see bosses from games like Sonic Chronicles, Sonic Neo Pocket Adventure, all that. I'm, I'm also including Sonic 4 Episode 1 and 2. I'm no excuses, I'm including those because they deserve to be in this video. And also, every single handheld boss will be on this list. So... Labyrinth, Pocket Adventure, Advanced Series, Rush Series, they're gonna be there. They're all gonna be in this video. Number two, for certain games, I'm using certain ways to control my character. For, for example, with the Storybook series, I used like a control pass that allows me to play with... It allows me to play with this through my Steam Deck. And for Sonic Freeriders, for this thing, I decided to use Xenia with a freaking controller patch that removes the connect feature by the modern race time. So, big thank you, big shout outs, and a big thank you to them for doing this, for making this game playable again. So, I don't want any purists of Sonic Freeriders to be like, oh, you should have used the motion controls and the connect. Nah, I ain't playing that. I ain't gonna play Sonic Freeriders with Connect on the channel, because I'm gonna show y'all why. I'm trying to skip the freaking cutscene. I haven't even played, I haven't even gone to the freaking title screen yet. Look! Number three, this list may subject to change, so. Not every opinion might be final, but hey, if it's on the list, it's on the list. And if a boss that you like is slow on the list, tell me why you like it. Leave it in the description below, leave it in the comments. Tell me why you like it. And I'd be glad you did not take that away from you. If you like it, that's all you. You like it, that's totally good. And for the fourth one, I'm gonna be ranking this based on S rank to F tier. TLDR, F being the worst, S being the best. So I will also be evaluating these bosses based on things like gameplay, music, difficulty, design, cinematics, and all that stuff. Because that is what amazingness entails for these bosses. And if it's combined perfectly, then they're good. They're masterpieces. And so with that out of the way, let the journey of Sonic Final Boss Ranking Commence! You are in hell! For this one, we're gonna need a bit of context. Long ago, Ix was the one who incited the construction of the Gizoids, highly advanced combat androids that warred against the Knuckles clan 4,000 years prior to the events of this game. But due to both him and the Nocturnus clan being the only survivors, they were imprisoned in the Twilight Cage for 4,000 years, and then Ix went mad, and then he allied with four alien species, and then during the events of the game, just dropped Angel Island on Metropolis. Nothing much, just stole the Master Emerald and dropped an entire island on a populated area. Just a regular Tuesday for him. And after you fight him for a second time on Nocturne, 
he sheds his battle armor and prepares himself to take on Supersonic. But surely this fight would be incredible and epic, right? Right? Your eyes were not deceiving you, my friends. That is the entire fight. This... This... is the final boss of Sonic Chronicles. All that you do in this fight, and I'm using that term very loosely, is that you tap the icons to block his only attack, which is Overlord. And then you use Super Sonic, and basically just do a glorified quick time event. And you defeat him in one turn! One turn! All it takes is one single turn! One singular turn of just tapping the freaking skeleton on the screen! And to make matters worse, the game just stands on a cliffhanger! There were plans for a sequel, but... That it was never resolved, thanks to... Suing Sega, EA, and Bioware, therefore rendering Chronicles 2, and Chronicles in general to not be canon. And now we'll never know. I had to play hours upon hours upon hours of this game just to fight this excuse of a final boss. You dropped an entire island? And I know it's meant to be cinematic in Sonic's point of view, but come on, a challenge would be nice. Even Bowser from Super Mario Galaxy 2 has a far more intimidating final boss than this. And this is why Twilight X is the worst Sonic final boss ever. In my own opinion, if you have anyone that's worse, sound off! Cause we're moving on! Now this next boss makes a complete 180 in terms of difficulty. Please and trust me, no! it's not for the better. Oh my god! The reason I put Black Dragon above X is because, at the very least, he's harder. Since Superstars has an extreme difficulty spike near the end of the game. Especially in the last story. In this first phase, he shoots red and blue rocks, which you've got to hit the blue rocks to hit him, manifesting crystal paths, shooting black holes, using a gigantic spin attack, which don't really knock you over, but you need the rings, so yeah. For the second phase, he uses gigantic claw attacks, he just stops time, and then, instead of black holes in the 2D section, he shoots gigantic fireballs. The main problem I have with this boss fight is that it requires you to wait so many times but you have to maintain your rings, and rings deplete while you wait. Come on, so that kind of just crosses over and doesn't mix well. Well, yes, there are rings that you can collect all over the stage, and Tails, Knuckles, and sometimes Trip can help you with the rings. But once you transition to a 2D section, you get you are you're, you're trying to get the rings. They just fly off. The rings just fly off, and you just lose them. The first phase, yes, I can do that one without much hassle, but the second phase is where things just go from bad to just downright wrong. But once you manage to get to the third phase, this third phase is just why? Why was the third phase like this? Why did I have so much trouble just trying to homing to a freaking rock? Why do I need the precision of a god? After you somehow complete your next surgeon exam, you fly into him and finally defeat him. In conclusion, the lack of context clues, loose physics, strict timer, and poorly designed difficulty spike is why Black Dragon sits at number 59. If that's not enough to prove you, watch the finale of my Sonic Superstars playthrough. <laughs> then you'll know why. Oh boy, Sonic Blast. Assuming you get the emeralds, the fight starts you off by giving you 99 rings. And this can either go great, 
or horribly wrong. In this fight, you have to attack the top half of his machine. This is easier said than done. Because of the game's atrocious hit detection, getting onto the freaking plat bottom platform, which means you have to align yourself to the most minute pixel of the hitbox to try to hit the top half. This is also thanks to, in no part, the game's clunky ass physics. In phase two, both halves start moving at different speeds, which means you'll have to time your jumps perfectly more often than not. Also, in this fight, I just find myself hitting myself over and over and over! Why am I keep hitting myself over in this fight? It should not be that hard! Thanks to the atrocious hit detection, the clunky physics, and they're all so broken that finishing this fight is a chore! Jesus Christ, this fight is not very good. In fact, it's like really bad. It's like atrociously bad. But at the very least, it's not as bad as X, because at the very least, you actually get to fight him through traditional means of gameplay. And that's something to be proud of. This is gonna be the first of our many encounters with this hunk of junk. And Sonic 4 Episodes 1 version, it's definitely not the best by any means. The first problem is the music. June, I love it when you shred that guitar, but them snares have got to go. You've been using them for the entire game and it's gonna blow my head off. Second of all, this boss got a little bit too much HP. Now you can make the argument that final bosses need a lot of HP to be challenging, but I guess it could be a bit too much for my taste. And another problem is that once you hit the Death Egg Robot, no matter how many times, it'll only register one hit, and it'll launch you way too far. Speaking of attacks, he will jump towards you, use his fists of doom, but if you manage to hit him enough times, he will activate his freaking Nutcracker Ballet routine, and then he'll proceed to whip out his attacks again along with floating balls, all while listening to the Snare of Doom. And if you somehow manage to get to the final hit, he's not done being evil yet, because he will try and land on a randomly allocated spot. And if you're too far from that spot, you will literally die and have to start the fight all over again. That is why. I don't have anything else to say about this fight. I just think it sucks. Moving on to number 56. Quick disclaimer, setting this up was a nightmare. Funny thing, I was actually gonna use the Java version of this mobile version, but then I discovered an enhanced Android port of this specific version of the game, so I can give you my thoughts on this fight. Well, it sucks. Not only because it's a very loose representation of the story, it's also a very tiring boss fight! After the first phase where you run away from the gigantic fists, what you have to do is avoid the missiles that it shoots, causing you to use the fist as a platform in order to attack Eggman. Now this is another case of physics being a crutch for you, because even when I press left and jump at the same time, someone just jumps in place! Look! I'm not pressing anything else! After you've managed to hit him enough times, you have to go to another phase that has you avoiding his rockets. But then once you reach the end of the room, you have to use the fist as a platformer in order to hit a switch, and then carefully platform yourself into Eggman. I have nothing else to say. This is jank. So, uh, yeah. We're moving on. Uh, yes. The game where even the EC CPUs perform like Ultron. This boss is actually the final minigame in Storm Mode, and it happens because Void becomes too welled up in his emotions, causing him to transform into this form. Anyone can trigger the fight when they get all the pressure stones, but the minigame itself is not very engaging. What you do in this fight is to wait for certain buttons in the arena while avoiding debris, lasers, shockwaves, and the tractor beam of doom. It actually doesn't matter who actually wins the minigame since it just takes you to the finale anyway. And y'all thought the Death Egg Robots theme from Sonic 4 was bad? Listen to this music. I, I, I thought the Sonic Forces classic music was bad. Just, I wanna commit a freaking piccolo and just rip my ears off. I don't wanna listen to this again. I did put Void a little bit higher because he does get redeemed in the end, which is kind of nice. And also it allowed me to beat Sonic Shuffle. Thank 
hopefully I beat that. Any way I could, I finally beat that game. Anyway, on to number 54. We have another case of lack of indication for this one, folks. I know that this is like a pinball-esque game, but I'm including this one too. Just getting up to this freaking boss fight is a challenge in itself. Once you manage to get up there, is when poop really hits the fan. What you have to do is to press the button on the ship several times, but it doesn't really indicate properly on what you gotta do. Because even if you think you've done the button pressing, there will be arms that will take you back to the start. And falling off the stage means you gotta climb it back up. To me, the worst thing about this fight is that there is no helpful indication on whether the arms or the wind things on the cockpit are up if you want to attack it. This was my biggest factor on why I put this boss in the F tier. Other than that, I guess the music is okay, but the physics can be pretty jank because it's a pinball game, physics are meant to be kind of jank and they cannot help you at all. All you have to do is hit the cockpit 10 times, but trying to get to the cockpit is an absolute nightmare. And if you somehow manage to hit him 10 times, you beat it, and then you get blessed with the options theme. Beautiful, just beautiful. Don't have a lot to say. He just looks ridiculous. For this fight, you just have to jump on him while avoiding his bouncing blasts. And you can easily just spam down until he dies. But after you hit him 16 times, Eggman decides to use the power of DeviantArt to pull out his one hit KO move. Which also takes one hit to do. Other than the strangely generic looking design, there's nothing else I can say about this fight. Dang, I don't really remember this game because it's unimpressive. Moving on. Here we have ourselves the poor man's doomsday zone. What you gotta do in this fight is push Eggman's rockets into this robot, which bears many similarities with the boss we'll look at later in this list. Now boosting into the rockets sounds easy enough, right? Nah, fam. Nah. Most of the time I find myself either missing the boss once I push the rocket or I get knocked back by the rocket even if I push it. And I'm doing this while I'm trying to maintain my rings. Besides that, there's nothing else that this boss can do. At the very least, this fight is merciful with its design when compared to the Black Dragon. And we also have a remix of Sky Sanctuary Zone as the final boss thing. Rather odd, but okay then. Other than this boss being a nightmare to hit, this fight is not really impressive either. I actually put this fight out of a pocket adventure because at the very least, it's shorter, yet it's also not another memorable fight in the least. What you have to do is hit the glass that Robotnik is standing in, which allows you to get two hits. After you hit him six times, the electric walls will start to activate at random intervals, which can be quite painful. <laughs> While I do think that the randomness of the electric walls can make this fight quite challenging, and a bit exciting at times, there's not really much that this fight really has to offer in terms of memorability. Well, I guess there's nothing else to talk about for this fight either. Guess that's it for the F tiers. Moving on to the D tiers. Is what I would say if it weren't for these two coming in at number 50. Now, I'm going to combine these two into one because they're both short and they're both hard. Starting off with Metal Sonic. Quick disclaimer, I absolutely suck at fighting games and make fun of you all you want for whatever reason. But this doesn't take away from the fact that Metal Sonic in this game is hard as balls. He'll come at you hard and fast and he will do the gravity deals one third of your HP. All you have to do is try to drain the barriers of your opponent as quickly as possible, and then use whatever combo that you're accustomed to. I just think this one's the better of the two. Now on to the E-Mech. Unlike Metal Sonic, who has a 30 second time limit, the E-Mech has 15 seconds. While he's much easier to beat, 
if you somehow fail to beat him, you have to start over from the beginning. If I was just gonna include the Emac, then this fight would be like lower on the list, but thankfully me including Metal Sonic from this game actually lifted this fight a little bit higher. I mean, it's at the top of F, which isn't really saying much, but hey, it's better than X's position.